Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to Shadowrun Hong Kong. This is my what is, my first impressions episode of this particular title. Now this is a sponsored video, but my opinions are my own, so let's get into it. Now I've played about, I've played about five hours of the title so far, and I'd never played a Shadowrun game before. If you don't know, uh, the Shadowrun RPG franchise, it's on PC, they've been released on Steam for a while now, uh, there's a few of them. And each one is its own story. Now, this is the first one that I played, like I said, and I kind of came into this one thinking, you know, I looked at the screenshots, and I said, okay, you know, it kind of reminds me of XCOM's turn-based team combat, and it's isometric, and I love isometric RPGs, you know, Pillars of Eternity, the Fallout franchise, and I figured it'd be a lot like, well, Fallout, maybe XCOM, and getting into it, was I wrong? Well, let's load up the game and we'll talk about some of its features and what it has to offer. And eh, maybe I was a little wrong and then a little right. So we'll just jump in here. Uh, let's do my most recent save. Let's do this one. My character Deadeye. One of my most recent saves. I've actually got two different characters named Deadeye. But all right, so what what do you play? Well, you're a shadow runner in this game. Now, what does that mean? Well, you are in a world that has fantasy and super sci-fi elements, right? In 20, I wanna say it was 2012, the story said, there was a merging, and it took our world and merged with it all the fantasy elements that you'd see, like orcs and elves and magical creatures and beasts and demons and all kinds of crazy stuff. So the universe itself is really cool. I mean, all this is based on a pen and paper RPG. Now, I had never played the pen and paper RPG, so I'm not well-versed in the lore. So you're gonna get this from the perspective of somebody who just bought Shadowrun and it was a totally fresh experience for them. Now, the first thing that you're gonna notice when you load up the game is one, there's only one bit of voice acting so far that I've seen in the game, and that is this really well done intro that sets the tale. And the tale is, let's see if I can zoom in here, you can see my character. I've got my my foster brother, Duncan, and then my character, Fix Cypher, or Dead Eyes, he's called as a shadow runner. You're looking for your father who sent you a message. He's, something's happened to him. You don't know what it is. You've been in the lockup. I don't know why yet, and I'm not sure they're ever even gonna explain it, but you've been in prison for a while, basically. You just got out, you were starting a new life, and then all of a sudden, you're contacted by the man who took you in, your foster father, and he's disappeared. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much of the story elements, I don't wanna give anything away, because that's the whole point of playing this game is the story. I will tell you that right now. The combat is good, but it's the story that you're gonna wanna play. I mean, that's the whole reason to get it. Now, visually, it looks great. The art style, they've got a whole bunch of new tile sets for this one that fit. I mean, it's Hong Kong, you got lots of neon, you got lots of little detail, like we'll zoom in on the, on the shop here. This one shop, you got like ramen and rice and stuff and some weird thing in a, in a container there and you can talk to all these characters, but Ah, <sighs> there's, there's one thing for me that I have a big disconnect with this game. Let's, let's run around a little bit. So I'm on one of my Shadow Run missions. Uh, at, you'll get to a point where you have kind of like a house where you can use your computer. It's actually a boat, it's a real piece of shit boat, but you'll use your computer. Can we go back? I don't think I can go back to the main like world space. No, I can't not until I finish this quest. Uh, you'll use your computer and you'll take on a shadow run mission. Just it's basically a job. You're like a mercenary who's off the grid. That's what a shadow runner is. You're off the grid. You do well, you do stuff in the shadows for people. I'm working for a crime lord trying to figure out what's going on with my dad. <sighs> the big disconnect for me though, and we'll we'll run in here. We'll run into another area and talk. The big disconnect for me is the way the story is told. Right, the story itself is told in text blocks. So let me start a conversation. Um, get the key to her shop or, okay. I'm investigating a killer right now, a bunch of murders are going on. But the majority of the story will be told like this, right here, gigantic text blocks. And you'll find that for, for me, for where I'm at in the game right now, about 90% of my game time, of the hours I've played, have been staring at this section of my screen right here. Because it's all text. Now, I'm not against a heavy story in a game, but what I have with the disconnect is how the story is told in just text. Now, the writers are fantastic. They build this world and your imagination will go wild with kind of building up where you are and who you're talking to with these characters. But it won't translate into the game. The best example that I have of this is Duncan, right? Me and Duncan, we're, we're running for our lives. 
he's having the well, worst day of his life, really. His father is missing, and his future is crumbling down. He just lost a, somebody that he cares for, and he's, he's going to snap. And you get a bunch of great storyline options in the corner here, in the bottom right, or uh, you know ways that you can respond to him. He's like, man, I don't think I can hold it in. I'm going to snap. And being his, you know, taking on the role of his brother, I went with the option, just go ahead. We're all by ourselves in this, like, subway. And it was this great, this description was fantastic. He was, it was talking about how his emotions were taking over and how his, you could see his rage building up. And then he, he walks over to a concrete block and he punches it and he breaks it. And it was just, it was a fantastic description. And I really connected with this character only being an hour into the game so far. So that's a testament to the writing. But the disconnect was then I looked over at my character and him and neither one of them were moving. And it was just... It's just so like, oh, well, you know, gaming is a visual medium. Gameplay has to triumph on everything for me to really enjoy something. And it was, there's just, there's no connection there. And then there's a couple times where they do use uh, the world space to tell the story. Um, one, I don't want to give anything away, but I was in the middle of a conversation and somebody got shot, sniped. And it was so quiet. Like, listen to the background sounds right now. All right, the music is very faint and you get the, the sounds of the city. Let me go back upstairs. There's not a lot I can do without giving too much of the story away, but you can hear the rain falling. You'll hear people talking, your dogs barking and stuff. And then you hear this like gunshot rattle off as I'm in the middle of this conversation. One made me jump in my chair because I've got my three, you know, my, my good headphones on. So it was kind of bassy. Two, his brains, brains exploded everywhere all over the road and the character collapsed in the middle of the conversation. So it was a great storytelling element that was shown in the game world. And yet, it, there's a pretty, pretty rare. There was one where, like, I was watching a newscast, and instead of just showing the box pop up in the corner, it actually switched the screen over to a news person behind a desk, and they showed the camera. And it was in this, you know, isometric perspective. It was really neat. But those so far for me have been far and few in between. Now, I love RPGs like this. Absolutely love RPGs like this. Let's run over this way. We're gonna go, gonna go poke around, and start some stuff. But all the ones that I've played in the past, the ones that I really love, have found ways... have found ways to tell the story within... within the game. And I think maybe if they had voice acting that would help, because, like, talk about Baldur's Gate, for instance, in an RPG with this kind of perspective. Um, you would get... you would get audio coming from the characters. You would see, like, the text above their head while the narrator would talk and while the characters would say things. So it kind of felt like they were saying it instead of this box in the right-hand corner. So that's my biggest complaint with the title. I'm sorry if I went on a little bit of a rant with this, but I do have to explain this because it's a big turnoff for me. Um, but like you can see, the detail in the world spaces, the tile sets, like these, the, the artistic backgrounds, these 2D backgrounds, um, are really, really nice. Examine the mask. All right, leave the box alone. So let's get into a little bit of the combat. I'm gonna load something else up. I actually thought this was a different save. Oh, wait, 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 here we go. Something's going on. Got you. The ghoul's blind eye search back and forth regards you. It cannot see you, but you have a sense that it knows exactly where you are at all times. Ah, hired gun. No doubt brought to bear against me by the Wimpen Elders is the guy's name. So I don't want to go into too much of this storyline. I actually don't know what's going on um, because this is all new to me. I loaded up the wrong save. That's okay. I want to show you guys some of the combat. So let's just go ahead. Oh, I can't get out of this without attack. Oh, there we go. I'll show you some of the combat. So this ghoul's running for cover. Uh, the AI will run for cover. They'll use their abilities, and you're normally up against more than just one character. He looks like he's in some crazy heavy armor too, which is pretty legit. If you ever played XCOM or maybe Fallout Tactics, you kind of get really, um, you'll know what's going on, basically. Cover works like you think it does. You get behind cover. If the enemy, like say there's an enemy over here, I can run behind cover, so let's just grab. There is no turn order for the characters. You get to just choose. Um, so let's grab like Duncan here and we'll run him over to cover. So we'll run him right there. So now he's got covered. It shows a little shield. Then there's percentage chance to hit and based on which ability you choose, here's all your abilities. Um, it can increase or decrease the, uh, the chance to hit. So like say if I want to do my normal shot at 65 or my snipe shot, it's 80%. So we'll do the snipe shot. So it's like the aimed shot. My character has a sniper rifle. So we'll switch to that. And that's why he's called Dead Eye. And I don't have a good shot, but what happens if I run over here? And he's got 
heavy cover, so I guess I could have run farther over and get better an angle on him. So we'll just move her over here. Now he's got probably no cover for me. Uh, my drone control guy is pretty legit. We can do manual focusing on his drone. He's like spider drone. There we go. We'll do it twice. Should be able to move her. And then I've got my my dwarf with a grenade launcher. We'll run her over here and we'll shoot a grenade at him. So, and you've got Overwatch and whatnot. Ow, that spread damage. Sorry, my bad. Just kind of a demo. Oh my God, look at it, he just hit me. Infection, ow. Why are my chances to hit so shitty right now? Is it because he's in between friendlies? Probably. Fire anyways, and I missed, not shocking. Duncan, give me a full auto blast to point blank range, and he's down. So the combat is pretty traditional uh, team-based, turn-based strategy. Uh, it is really enjoyable though, because you get, because it's such a cool universe, not only do you get like the weapons um, of say Fallout, where you get all the, uh, the you know, guns and pistols and shotguns and grenade launchers and all that, but you also get this fantasy world of magic. You, so you get like mages in the background or hackers. Uh, you get the guy, like the Russian dude that I've got here that I recruited who has this, uh, is this drone that has all kinds of own abilities and you can rush him in and then he's got different buffs he can do where he can take direct control of it. So it's, it's pretty cool. It's a shame we had to kill the ghoul. It seemed an interesting, unique perspective. So I'll probably, I'm gonna definitely reload this so I can find out. Maybe I can recruit the ghoul or something. That would be neat. But yeah, I, that's basically Shadowfall in a nutshell from my perspective. Uh, is it a fun game? Yes. It's one of these games I think I'm going to save and put on my tablet. So on a rainy day, I can kick back and relax. Or maybe a day I'm not feeling good and I can sit there and if I just want a story, a really heavy story, I can sit down and play it. It definitely has a very noir feeling to it with more and more you read about how dark and gringy Hong Kong actually is and how the crime lords, the crime lord has taken over this section of town or there's these different factions and then you've got the, the bigger picture of the world which is taken over by uh, corporations. And the world's run by more than more CEOs than politicians. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, I've been enjoying it for sure. The characters also, I have to give a shout out to whoever came up with the character design for these. Like, we'll, we'll run back in here real quick. Even characters that normally in RPGs don't matter have fantastic little discussions and, uh, and they got character behind them. They are characters. They're, she, like, okay, this this lady here, she's the tailor. She's the one that sold me my, uh, my, my current trench coat, right? All right, well... Instead of just being basically a vendor, I click her and I can go to, you know, what do you have to buy? She's actually got a little bit of story, talks about her skills. I'm in this like super tech district and she talks about how she uses like nanofiber tech to make really interesting bits of clothing. It's, it's a neat touch. Or this one here who's, I had a long conversation about a, an arcade game that she happened to find and where she's from. And we started talking about these like, She's from Dublin, I think. And she started talking about this, she used to be a, a sort of pseudo park ranger. She's an elf, by the way. Um, pseudo park ranger in in Dublin that, and she had the accent, how, how it's all written out, how uh, these, these demon horses will grab you and drown you and eat you. And her job was to like make sure that the the, the fantasy uh, creatures that were coming into the park weren't upsetting the natural balance of things. It's, and she so far has had absolutely no part in the main story at all. She's just a character sitting there. And it's little details like that that I have to say are, that make me want to play more of this, even if the majority of the game for me is taking place in this little box. And you can see like how much actual text there is there. So I don't know, because there's so many iterations of this particular franchise now, I would really like to see, for, for my perspective, a little more audio for the characters. I'd like to see some voice acting brought in. I mean, I don't know how many games they're up to now, but maybe they can afford some voice talent. To really give some of these characters even more life and to keep us looking at the center of the screen, the action going on. I'd also like to see more animations for the character models. Yes, the character models are not by any means fantastic. I mean, they're pretty simple. Let's see if I can load myself up here. 
and the character creation is fairly simplistic when it comes to the look of your character, but if you played one of these games before, um, Pillars of Eternity, I think being the exception, there's actually quite a few options in there, character creation has always been fairly simple in the looks, but when you get into the stats, I don't have any cyberware yet. Uh, when you get into the stats and the items and all that, that's when you get a little bit more depth. And I'm still learning mechanics in this, because there's actually quite a bit. Like, I don't have any spells. My guy is strictly um, firearms and whatnot. But, all right, guys, that's Shadowrun for me. Hopefully, this gave you an idea if you'd like to pick it up or not. Um, do I recommend it? Yes, if you're looking for a, a very novel-esque title that has a very kind of gritty noir detective novel feel to it so far yeah I, I dig it I dig it for that if you're looking for XCOM style strategy and like you really just want to get into the combat and you want to have a feeling of a lot of character progression and tactics there's probably better titles out there for you um, I wouldn't do this one because you're going to spend most of your time reading and not in combat. And I, I bought that new sniper rifle and for the longest time I was like, this is great and all, but I really want to get into some combat because it's fun and I want to try out the sniper rifle. And it was hours, it was a good hour and 20 minutes before I got into combat again to test out my, my new weapon to see my new abilities. So if that gets on your nerves, you're probably not going to want to play this one. All right, guys. If you enjoyed this video, though, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Away!